have so many of you come and see me in a venue like this. And one of the great honors of doing tours of this nature is I get to introduce you to some absolute diamonds from the UK comedy scene. The act I'm about to welcome to the stage is not only a very good friend, he is one of the best out there, an absolute diamond, and shortly to be one of your favorites, his name is Mark Nelson. Would you start the applause, please? Thank <laughs> you. 
Clearly, this boy I'm married to is incapable of doing this. <laughs> Maybe we'll just phone I'll phone him. I'll phone him. He's your childlike fingers probably even be able to do that. <laughs> She ran in and yelled, Look, you've been pissing about that thing for long enough. <laughs> Maybe you should phone your dad. <laughs> <laughs> no need. No need. It's cruel. Because I know, I know I'd never say anything like that to her. Never. No matter what the situation. Like, I'm never lying there suffering one of her lackluster hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Acorns on a tree. 
Hey, you see, just fucking sweeping the leaves from the tree, aren't you? <laughs> just knocking dogs at the oncoming traffic. <laughs> jogging anymore, it's like someone's constantly tapping me in the shoulder. <laughs> you were sat in a testicle, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've sat in front of my testicle. <laughs> my testicles have asked me to move. <laughs> and I'm not even talking about the ball. Like, you know the ball. <laughs> the testicle part is a very, very small thing. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the big bag that they live in. <laughs> just this big, huge, builder's merchant Christmas sack. Just to, just to house these tiny balls. Such a waste of space. It annoys me. I don't need my balls anymore. I don't. I have two kids. I'm not going to have any more. I don't need any of the space. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to get a doctor, ask me to take the balls out, put them in a sick. <laughs> I'll keep loose change in there. <laughs> if I ever turn up for a Ryan Air flight over the baggage allowance, I'll stick a dressing gown in there. Actually, get some news out of it. Because you don't get any of your balls. You don't. Nobody loves balls. And you'll have to live in as well. You, you're a young woman in here. You're laughing away at this one. Ha 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 ha. Happen to you. Gravity will beat you as well. As you get older, your breasts will start to sag. But the thing is, you'll still be able to push them up. You'll still make them look good. You'll still get all the benefits. You'll still get drinks bought for you. I've never had a drink bought for me because of my balls. <laughs> Walked in my club with my balls slung over the top of my cheeks. <laughs> and women still with drinks, aren't they? Yeah. I've never had to interrupt some in mid conversation go, hey, sweetheart, my eyes are up here. <laughs> That's the first piece of advice you give me, Matt. Second piece, be there. You two, your generation. You are a shite generation of people. <laughs> <laughs> you get real, like there's this old folk in here. They're cool, but there's an old man behind you. Yeah. You're a good man. A <laughs> <laughs> well, man's got stuff under his sports skin older than you. Look <laughs> <laughs> up. He's fucking enjoying himself. <laughs> no one that winter is coming, so this is his last night. You know, this is. <laughs> I like that generation. Your generation, cool as fuck, Steve. I am sound. The wee young guys do balloons and attack you in the street. They're cool as fuck. You people. Mm. Kill a wanky fucking. Buzzfeed questionnaire to find out what kind of garlic bread you are. <laughs> Same generation you are. All you can afford. You're the only generation in history where your parents aren't going to be worried about what you're up to. Because you're going to be up to fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> you do nothing. I've looked into this, right? For the past 70 years in popular British culture, right? In the 50s, America gave us Elvis, rock and roll, sexualized British young people, right? In the 60s, the Beatles, LSD, the summer of love. And in the 70s, punk, even more drugs. Into the 80s, cocaine, the AIDS crisis. And in the 90s, when I grew up, illegal raves, ecstasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly not left some of us. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Just sitting in a vegan cafe with your fidget spinner. <laughs> Take drugs tonight to do you. 
clearly think that they love, so let's stop. <laughs> Last piece of advice I gave you before I go, um, uh, maybe kinky sex, get in about that. Because <laughs> it's a good age to get in, honestly. Before you're married as well. When's the, when's the wedding? I don't know. Right, do the kinky sex before. <laughs> Nobody saves good stuff for marriage, honestly. <laughs> no one's ever cheated on me either. Dressed as a Nazi. <laughs> Shoving a Lego mat up someone's ass. <laughs> Well, you think this is good? You mean to be at the church and the government involved in? We're really going to kick things up or not? Because <laughs> there's this massive misconception, right, that sex just stops when you have kids uh, and you get married. It doesn't, it just becomes different. Sex when you have kids, it's kind of like robbing someone's house. You want to get in and out as quick as possible. Without <laughs> waking anyone up. <laughs> Much better if both of them masks. Uh, <laughs> and you try and spice it up, you know. Like, I remember um, a couple of weeks ago, me and my wife have been out drinking, and we're in the back end, we're kind of sidling up to each other on the couch, and my wife Amy said to me, I've been reading about this thing on the internet to spice things up. Let's build a sex swing. <laughs> what? Look how much we argue for trying to build an Ikea wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'll be running around with a direction in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> Having to disassemble it as soon as we're finished. Just in case the kids have a shot in the morning. Because <laughs> that, that would never happen. Never happen. Men, men don't want to do anything after sex. The worst thing in a man's life. You hate yourself. Honestly, it's so miserable after sex. Because the male orgasm and the female orgasm are massively different things. Female orgasm is a beautiful thing. Ladies, you are never more beautiful than when you are orgasming. <laughs> Lying back in the pillow, and your hair is flowing across it like a stream. Small beads of sweat rolling down your brow, looking up to the sky, going, uh. <laughs> uh.